Welcome back. It's time now to do our fetch request to our register endpoint. Let's crack on with our JavaScript code. Once the, the validation logic has been implemented, let's just set up a try catch block to start beginning fleshing out our call here. And we'll just make sure we set up a catch block that can handle the errors. And if anything does happen at this stage, we just want to create a error message back to the user on that div. So we'll make use of this inner HTML property and then we'll just update the value there. Let's use some string interpolation and then we'll just say fail to register user. And then let's just pass through the error message. And then we'll just do some handling here. Or if there is an error message, let's display it. Otherwise, let's just have some type of generic text that we can display. We'll say unknown error occurred, more of a generic fallback. That does it for our, our catch block. That's just going to be handle any major problems that occurred during our attempt to request the API. So before we implement the actual fetch request, just make sure that your, your API actually is running on localhost 3000. So we can begin typing our code here. The way we're going to do this is we're going to make use of the native fetch request available to us in JavaScript. So we'll just say const response because we, we marked our handler as a sync here. We can make use of the await keyword and then we can call fetch by using the, the fetch keyword and the string that you pass in here is the host and the URL of the API. So we'll do HTTP and that's going to be localhost 3000 and then that'll be API. And then the last one is just to hit our register endpoint. Then the next thing that we pass or the next argument that we pass into the fetch is a few options so we can open up some curly braces for our object there. And the first thing we're going to do is mark this method as a post request. We need to set up some, some headers and we need to mark this content type as application.json because that's the style of our API that we've written with our express server. And that's all we need for headers for now. Lastly, we will just send through the body, which will be an object, which we actually need to json.stringify. And this is where in the body of here, we can send through the values that are being sent or passed into the form. So these values that we have here all map exactly to the expected keys that are expected in the API. So we can just make use of some object shorthand syntax here. We can pass in the first name, the last name, email and password. And that's just going to create the, the JSON object that we need and that the, the API is expecting. Okay, so we've typed a, a bit of code here. We've set up that response variable. We are waiting the outcome of this fetch. So the fetch is gonna return a promise, which is being handled by our async await. We're hitting our api.register endpoint. We've marked the method as a post, set up the headers and passing through the body. So at this stage, let's test uh, out our work here and see if we've done anything majorly wrong. Let's put a, a debugger below the response here. Let's give this a test. So you can head on over to your web page and just put in the values We'll say john at test.com and then I'm just going to use one, two, three, four here. And I'm going to make sure that we have our dev tools open and I'm going to just go to this network request tab here. If you have this all tab marked here, just like can isolate it by just blocking out only the fetch or the XHR requests. And so as I hit register here, we're going to see the outcome of our request to our API. So I'm going to hit register. We hit our first breakpoint. We've got all our values in there. And then the very next thing that should be executed is this response. Then you're going to see we do on our form get a, a fail to register user. The error that we see here is failed to fetch. And you'll see we get this error in our browser. And this is something that we've planned to come across. And if you take a look, you're going to see it says access to fetch at the, the localhost 3000 from the origin localhost 9000 has been blocked by the cause policy. So as a security measure in the browsers, they use this policy called cause or cross origin resource sharing. And it basically prevents different hosts, like the origin and the source host, if they're different, there's like some strict criteria that need to, to be implemented on both the server and the client side in order to be able to make requests. So it's basically to, to implement some unknown request from an unknown client domain to hit your API. If your API is example.com, you only want your request coming from example.com. And if those hosts between the origin and the source are different, it kind of is a security flag. And this does raise a problem for us in a development environment. Typically, those URLs that are set up for production with like a, a fully qualified like domain name and that, we're not going to be using that in most likely in development environments. So this uh, cause problem does come up 
a lot in development environments when you're integrating the front end into the back end like this. Very common problem. It's quite frustrating at times. Uh, luckily for us, we have a very simple fix that we can use um, or make use of in the live server. And so I'm going to head over to our terminal here and I'm just going to kill live server for now give us some space and the way that we've been setting up our command here we've just had the live server command we've put in the host as well as the port and if you take a closer look at the docs for for live server you can see they have some options for cores so what we want to do is actually make use of this proxy command here so what this is going to do is it's going to create a proxy for us to use to mark that the front end is actually coming from localhost 3000 instead of 9000 and so it's going to kind of trick our our server into thinking that it is coming from the same origin and therefore it won't trigger this cause warning or the, the cross origin resource warning that we're seeing. So the way we set up this proxy is we can call this a proxy flag here. And so to set up this proxy now, the way we're going to do this is we're going to say slash API and that's going to try and like match anything in the the fetch requests that are coming through with the, the, the forward slash API. And then we want to map any of those requests that match that to the HTTP localhost 3000 server. Then it'll be slash API, just because that's the prefix of our API. And if we hit enter here, we'll see a new page opens, but we'll just stick with the one we're using with our open dev tools. We'll refresh that page and you'll see that it's now mapping slash API to the local host slash API. So all we need to do in our code now is remove this host here and the trailing slash and hit save. And once that's done, we can retest our form. So we'll do, John, just fill out our form real quick. And then if I hit register now, we're gonna hit our breakpoint. All our values are coming through. Let's continue and see what happens. So you'll see there's no more cause error that's coming through. We can see the response actually comes back here. The, the body that we get back is a readable stream and that's just the fetch kind of the, the body of the, the request might be coming through asynchronously. So it like creates it as a readable stream, but there are some other properties here. The status is 200. Uh, okay, everything went fine, status is okay. And you can see even the URL here that uh, said localhost API register, um, you can see that our proxy worked because if we go to our network tab in DevTools, you'll see the, the register endpoint. Um, and yeah, it's currently pending because we've just got our breakpoint. But if we inspect that, you'll see our payloads all looking good. And then if we just continue with our breakpoint here, you'll see in the, the preview or the, the preview of the response, we get back this whole user object that comes back from our API. Uh, and if we've been watching what's happening in our terminal, uh, we've been hitting the code in our API to say that that user has been created. Uh, it's now returned that information back to the front end. Uh, and in our, our code, uh, we've hit this debugger, we've got this valid response. If we just take a look at uh, the response we get back here, we, we realize that there, there is something really important that we need to do on the API side of things. And we actually need to uh, refactor the way that we're sending information back to remove any sensitive information here. So that's gonna be something that we're gonna do in a moment. Uh, however, let's just finish off with our fetch request handling here. And so we can remove this debugger and let's just say if, and then we saw response had this status or this property called okay. And so if response was okay, then we know everything went well and then we can do whatever we need to do here. But for now, let's just handle this else case. We want to grab the error that's coming back from our response, if there is one. So we'll just destructure the response.json. So in order to access the, the JSON body from the response, we just need to call this response.json method. Uh, and this is going to be an asynchronous one. And that's just related to that readable stream that we pointed out earlier. Then once we have the error, let's just throw a new JavaScript error. And the contents of that will be error and then there is this message that will come back and we'll just pass through the first one that comes through and let's just test that case now in our API real quick and so let's put some bad values in this form just to test that out and if I hit register now and we continue with our API you can see we get back a 400 and we see fail to register user the name must match the following pattern and if we take a look at our register endpoint in the network tab uh, the payload you can see that first name's got special characters and our api is not going to allow that and so the api responds with the error code of 400 and then an array of messages and in this case the the first item here is 
the, the name must match the following pattern because we threw that error in our else here because the response wasn't okay. It's then caught by this block here and it's appended that to our error and nothing further is going to happen after that. Everything's just kind of failed. That's great for our error handling. Let's take a short break over here. In the next lesson, we will fix our API logic just to make sure we're not returning any sensitive information. And then we'll implement the success case here and take a look at what we want to do in that case. So I'll see you on over there. Cheers for now.